Well, they're, 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 they're a good waiter, a good waiter would do other things. A good waiter would suggest. testimony. God has been so good. He has done so much for us. I don't know about you, but I am blessed and I am thankful for what God has done for keeping me. Oh my God, bless the name of the Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your presence because in your presence there is fullness of joy. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for when I should have been dead and gone. Father, you kept me, you preserved me, you healed me, oh Lord God. When they counted me out, oh Lord God, I thought my surgery, God. Oh, Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for you were the infusion I needed, oh Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, because you had a purpose and a plan for our life, oh Lord God. And oh Lord God, we will not leave this earth until that time has come. So Father, I thank you, Lord God, for my life, my health, and my strength. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for Lord, you alone is worthy. Matter of fact, you're more than worthy to be praised. So Father, I give you glory and I give you thanks this morning, God. I am so thankful, Lord God. Oh Father God, I thank you and others has counted us out, Lord God. Oh, Father God, you qualified us, oh Lord. So, Father, I bless your name. I thank you, Lord God. Some wasn't able to make it this morning. Oh, Father God, some didn't have it this morning. But, oh, Lord God, you saw fit, God, that I can say I am blessed. I am blessed, God. We are blessed beyond measure. And so, Father, I give you glory and I give you honor. Allow me to be your mouthpiece in this hour, God. Father God, that I will speak only your words, Father. Oh, Lord God, I decrease 
that you may increase, oh Lord God. And so, Father, I'm so grateful to be used by you. I'm so grateful, Lord God, to be used as a vessel from the Most High God. I am so thankful, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. This is New Life in the City. I am Pastor Shaquilla, and we are under the direct leadership of first the Holy Spirit, God our Father, and our shepherd, Pastor Isaac Smith. Thank you for tuning in. I pray that you were blessed by that pre-recorded praise and worship. And and I just I, I'm in, in I am in expectation. I don't know about you. Even though I'm ministering, it's for me also. I'm in expectation. Amen. I'm going to ask that you would share this broadcast. If you have not already, share it on your page. Sharing it is very important. It's, it's, it's just as if you, you know, sometimes back in the day, we used to make CDs and we used to sell CDs um, to spread the gospel. Thank God for social media. We're able to just share it. We're able, and so that's why this is so important. Share it with your loved ones, your friends, your Facebook friends, family. Go ahead and share it. I'll give you a moment. Take this time to share it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you don't know, I tell you, ask one of them young people in the house. They know what to do. They know how to share it. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Well, I am so blessed to be before you this morning, I'm going to ask that you would repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to comprehend and receive what the Holy Spirit has to say. Amen. And the Holy Spirit has a word this morning. Bless the name of the Lord. If you were with us on last Sunday, you see that face? Okay. Minister Esther ministered a word on open your mouth. Open your mouth. Amen. A powerful word. If you haven't watched it, you want to go and watch it. I, I, I tell you, open your mouth. You got to be saying something. You have to be saying something. Amen. Remember, there the power, life and death is where? Is in your tongue. So that tells us that we have to be saying something. Amen. But it's what you are saying is so important. So if you want more on that, please go and watch last Sunday's message, the third Sunday. Go and watch that message, and I promise you that you will be blessed. Amen. 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 The title of my message this morning, and, and I know some of you may have saw it um, already, is what are you doing? Open your mouth. What are you doing? Posture is everything. Your posture. It, when you are not confident, there is a posture that you take. I'm not sure. But when you are confident and you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, oh yeah, I'm good, yes, I got that. It's a different posture. So I asked you this morning, and I'm going to ask you in the duration of this message, what are you doing? Because I want to remind you that you need to be doing something, and it's what you're doing. So let's talk about that a little. Can we go in? Amen, amen. Let's look at Psalms 57.2. Most of my scriptures are going to be coming from the Amplified Version and the Easy to Read Version. Psalms 57 2 says, I will cry to God Most High. And, and, and if most of you all, if you have been tuning into our messages, you know that this is one of Pastor Isaac's favorite messages. I mean, um, scripture. His ver oh, he loves this verse at a time when he was not doing well in college and there was a lot of weight on his shoulders. And he'll tell you how he pulled off on the side of the wor world and he said, I will cry. And I mean, crying. And he just screamed this verse out. Amen. It says, I will cry to God most high who accomplishes all things on my behalf for he completes my purpose in his plan. Mm. For he completes my purpose in his plan. You've heard me say, and, and we know this, that we're all here 
to complete a purpose and we have a purpose. Now God has put into to place a plan that how everything is to play out. You know, and, and that scripture it talks about in Jeremiah, how everything is played, you know, in your life has already been set and then God brings you back to the beginning so that you can walk it out. Okay, everything has been play, played out. Okay, God has a perfect plan and in his plan includes you walking in your purpose as part of fulfilling it. Amen. It says, for he completes my purpose in his plan. Okay, so now we got to walk this thing out. I ask you again, what are you doing? Okay. I want you to understand that your purpose is to glorify God in every good work. To glorify God in every good work. What do you mean? Okay. First of all, I want to tell you that in glorifying God. Now, let's say we get up to heaven. I promise you. That God is not going to ask you how many Instagram posts you had. God, God, he, he's just not going to say, how many YouTube followers did you have? Mm -hmm. You know, did you get a, how many likes did you get on Facebook? That That is not what he is going to be asking you. Okay. But the good works that we're talking about that will glorify God is living a selfless life. It's winning souls for Christ. Well, let's talk about the good work. The good work is living a lifestyle of worship. Okay? This is the good work to live uh, to love unconditionally. That's a big one, to love because you can do a whole bunch of things and if you don't love, it could mean nothing. Okay? Let's talk about the good work. The good work declaring his praises. Now, I don't know about you, but when I go before the Father, I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Not how many Instagram posts you created and how many followers you have and how many likes you got on Facebook. But I want to hear, well done. You did good. You did good. Amen. Amen. So, again, I ask, what are you doing? Let's look at Proverbs 16.3. Proverbs 16, 3 tells us to commit our works to the Lord and your plans will be established. Established means to grow and to flourish successfully. If you commit your works, if you commit what you are doing to the Lord, it will be established. It will be successful. It will flourish and it will grow but that is only when you commit your works to the Lord commit give to the Lord Lord I, I give this to you Lord show me help me commit to the Lord okay and so it's very important that what you do now I'm not talking about spinning your wheels because I got to get to heaven and I want to get to heaven so I got to do this. If I don't get up 5 o'clock, if I don't do this and if I don't do that and, and you have a line of things that you think that you must do to get into heaven. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a heart matter. A heart matter. When you love someone, doesn't, doesn't it make you want to do things? And see, that's why God looks at our heart. Not if you're wearing pants or not. I know there are some churches you can wear pants, da 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 da. Well, God is looking at your heart. It's a heart matter. Amen. And that love will cause you to want to do. Amen. Okay. So I want to give you, let's look at an example. March, I'm, I'm sorry, Mark, the first chapter. Mark, the first chapter. Now, this is an example of Jesus when he went to Galilee and was baptized by John the Baptist. Now, Right there, Jesus could have said, you know what? I'm just coming from my father in heaven. My being baptized by John, you know, I am I'm I'm the Christ. Don't he know who my daddy is? My daddy is God. You know? But no, he humbled himself. Why? Because he had a purpose. His purpose was included into God's plan. Amen. And so Mark 9, 1, and it says, And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John the Baptist, John at the Jordan. 
And straight away coming out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Remember, I, that's what I want to hear. God, uh, you know, I'm, I'm well pleased with you, Shaquille. I'm well pleased. But what are you doing? Jesus was on assignment. He was following his purpose. And he knew that this needed to get done. So he didn't get in his feelings concerning John. Why John got to baptize me? I need to be baptizing John. He, 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 he understood his assignment on earth. Amen. He understood. But look at this. After he was baptized, because he was on purpose, look what happened. In verse 12, it says, and immediately the spirit did what? drove him into the wilderness to be tested the spirit not the devil the spirit drove him into the wilderness. now remember he's doing his purpose he's following his assignment in the plan that god has created and he was in the wilderness wilderness for 40 days and he was tempted by satan and was with the wild beasts but I want you to understand, it says the angels minister to him. God always have a plan. God always have a, a plan put in place to keep you, to strengthen you as you go through the temptation. Now, I want you to know that after you make a decision to step into your God's given purpose, there will be a period of temptation. Why? Because if the devil be the devil, you always hear me say he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So he sees what you're doing. He sees what you're doing. Oh, oh, you trying to do right. Okay, okay. so his first thing is, I'm going to confuse her or him. I want to redirect their plans. Because it seems like they're trying to get it right. Oh, no, but I'm finna, I got to trip them up. He's going to do anything to attempt to destroy the calling on your life. His whole purpose is to get you from walking in your purpose. If I can steal it away, if I can kill it, he, he, he wants to get you off course and to redirect you. But you got to remain focused and faithful. Focus and faithful. Amen. God will lead us into places that may not feel good. It may not look good, but it's for your good. See, a lot of times when hardship comes, even though in the Bible who said that trials and tribulations will come, be of good cheer, I've already overcome the world. But when they come, we know they don't feel good. But for the mere fact that God put that in the Bible, lets you know that I am with you and you can do it. Don't you know that God has already downloaded into you whatever you need to overcome in every situation or circumstance yes that's blessed because you're blessed just to be his son just to be his daughter you are blessed so you have an overcoming ability mm. but see a lot of times when we're faced with a situation and we get angry or frustrated we act outside of our character we forget who we are. I am a child of the most high God. I will not allow a situation or a person to control me and to cause me to be redirected. I will not be redirected because why? I know my purpose. See, Jesus could have been redirected at the Jordan because he said, wait a minute. John, I'm higher than you. Do you know who I am? But no, he understood his assignment. And so he was not going to be redirected because he was focused on what had to get done. He knew his purpose. Do you know your purpose? I ask you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Now, in order to overcome the period of temptation... Because, see, I want you to know that even though we have a job to do and a purpose to fulfill, the enemy have a job to do, and he has a purpose to fulfill. And it's against you. So, during this period of temptation, you're going to need preservation to be able to stand. God, preserve me in this time. You're going to need to be committed, and you're going to need some overcoming power. 
You're going to need some overcoming power. But I want you to don't fret. I, I don't want you to be fearful because I want you to understand. And I want you to listen to me good with this statement. Opposition is a part of the process. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's a part of the process. I, I, I don't want you to think that when I become a Christian, everything is going to go my way. It's going to be uh, uh, mashed potatoes and gravy if that's your thing. You know, it's going to be so good. I'm not going to have any problems. It's just like having my cake and eat it too. Everything's going to go well because that's the biggest lie. You're going to go through, baby. Why? Because we're not perfect. We're on our training ground and God has a responsibility to work out some of that stuff that's in us to prepare us for what's to come. There is no perfect human being that has been born into this world. And because God loves you, he's given you a time to work things out. And why do he allow the enemy to touch us? Ah, that don't feel good all the time. No, but he allows the enemy to touch us mm -hmm. just like Job. Come on. Mm -hmm. And 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 to see, are oh, they going to trust me? Are you going to ask for strength from God? Or are you going to stand when you've done everything to stand? Are you going to stand? Are you going to trust me? Are you going to call upon the name of the Lord at your time of your very weakness? Are you going to say, God, I need your help? Are you going to say, God, I can't do this without you? Or are you going to sit in the valley and take a residence, change your address, and I'm going to moat right here? Woe is me. Opposition is a part of the process. The trials that you endure will only make your witness more powerful. I've heard someone say it's your mess that you go through now that will be your message that will help others in the long run. Amen. Amen. Your mess is to be a message. Yes. The test that you're going through now is to be a testimony for someone else. Amen. Amen. So why do I got to go through? Remember, God is working some things in you and out of you. Amen. There is a work that must be done. There is a preparation that is going on for what is to come. Amen? Amen. When you embark on the journey to fulfill your purpose, the Spirit will bear witness in what must be done. The Spirit will be right there. Okay, all right. Oh, she's doing good. Oh, she's standing. You know, it's not easy. Oh, but she's standing. Yeah. Oh, she's putting her trust in God. She's looking to God. Oh, oh, he's bearing witness. I'm there. I can see. Because how many know that if you don't pass the test, you're going to have to take the test again? Now, let me explain the test. Now, see, you hear people say that. I, I, I'm not passing. If I don't pass the test, I'm going to have to take it again. The test itself will never change. What has to change is your way of looking at that test. Yes. Okay, it's the way you look at that test. So if you're going to give that test control, are you going to allow that test to be to cause you to be redirected? Are you going to allow that test to allow you to lose focus? So let's say the test is someone nagging you and they telling you, oh, you fat. Oh, girl, you look at you. Look at you. You need to get yourself together. You don't look good. Look at you. Look at you. And you go in your corner. You, man, why is she always calling me out? And this time she's doing it in front of people. I can't. Uh, and, and then you go back and she do it again. And you keep going in your corner until one day you say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I'm going to stand and I'm not going to allow those words to penetrate because they're not true. I'm not going to receive it. And then you keep saying that you keep, Lord, I need you to help me. And then one day you come out and that person go at you again and you just look at them and smile and keep walking. That's when you pass the test. Mm -hmm. But did that change the situation? No. no. And that person may continue. Because that person has some issues and that's why they're doing this. So you got to understand some things. But the Holy Spirit will be a witness to the work that must be done in your life. He will say yes or no. Did they pass the test or not? Do we have some test takers that are willing to pass the test? Yeah. Again, I ask you, what are you doing? 
Now, there are some spirit-driven choices which are a sign of your purpose. Certain things that happen in the spirit realm and that you are to walk in that is a sign to know, oh, this is my purpose. Yes. This is what God, what God has called me to do. Because some of you are saying, and, and, and you're saying right now that I don't know my purpose. I don't know what I'm, I'm supposed to do. Spirit-driven choices are a sign of your purpose. Okay? We're going to leave it right there. Now, I have some key points concerning your purpose. Some key points that I want to share with you and it's concerning your purpose to give you a better understanding of your purpose and what we need to be doing. Okay? Understand that your purpose will be backed by the power and authority of God. I love right. that. Right. I love right. that. Right. I love that. Whatever you're doing. So, so let me tell you, you know, there are times when you do certain things and you know that it's not really something you want to do. And you say, I'm just going to do it. You do it and you got no power, no anointing for it. And you fail every time. Mm -hmm. But that thing that you do and you're confident and you know that it's God driven. To know that you are backed by the power and authority of God when you operate in your purpose. Why? Because it's a part of his plan and it's for you to walk this out. So God says, baby, do what you got to do. And the only thing you got to do is stand and keep going because it, this thing has already been played out. You just walking it through. So understand your purpose will be backed by the power and authority of God. God will not leave you out there. Okay? God will not leave you. Amen. Another thing. Amen. Even though people will hate you, the anointing on your life will be undeniable. Amen. People will hate you. People will look at you just because you're succeeding in the things of God. People will cross their eyes at you because it seems like you're doing better than them. But that's okay because, again, we're not controlled by people and we will not be redirected. Stay focused on the things of God and walking out the purpose. This is a God thing, baby. Baby, this is a God thing. Amen. This is a God thing. And so you want to fulfill what God has on your life. The anointing on your life is undeniable. Is undeniable. Yes. Amen. Amen. Another one. The God given purpose on your life. It will bless and heal others and push them into action. Some of y'all may have experienced this. Some people look at the anointing on your life. They see you walking in your calling and in your purpose. And they have a, 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 a drive. Oh my God, I want that too. I, God, what's my purpose? What is my purpose? God, I want to be able to walk. Because there's a fulfillment when you're walking in your God-given purpose. And that will push others that are watching you. That will push them into action and to doing. Amen. Amen. Another point. Your purpose will draw people to you. Everything God places in you were meant to be a solution. And those who need what you have, guess what? They're going to find you. They, 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 they're going to find you. Amen. So God will draw people to you. And, and you know, in certain seasons, you wonder, okay, this person, I've been seeing them. They've been in my life. But all of a sudden in this season, I'm able to impart something into, into them that drastically changes their life. Season. Yes. Season. Yes. So God will draw people to you because there is a solution that you have that they need. And so they'll find you. They will find you. Another point. True purpose will push you closer to God. Because yes. as you are walking in your God-given purpose, know yes. that God is well yes. pleased. Yes. And God will open doors that otherwise would be closed. You will see that thing that seemed impossible become possible. God will begin to orchestrate your life because you're walking in your purpose. And as you are doing this, you're getting closer to God. You know that song that just a closer walk with thee? Granted Jesus, if you please. So you, you, you're walking in the plan and God's plan in your purpose. And so God is with you because you, you know, God is it's like, you know, um, you know, y'all heard me always talk about my favorite movie, the matrix it will download in you. That means you have to be in close communication. 
close communication because he's giving you instructions. He's giving you the assignment in that season. He's So he has to be close to you. Amen. Amen. Understand your need for him to be able to accomplish what you're purposed to do. Next point. Purpose is focused and strategic. Purpose is focused and strategic. Okay? But see, I want you to understand that God has already did everything, planned it all out, and you just got to walk in it. So the strategy has been already planned out. Amen? You got to remain focused. Your direction in life will be dictated by your purpose. Wow. Your, let me say that again. Your direction in life will be dictated by your purpose. If your purpose is feeding the elderly, for example. So every time, you, when it says your direction in life, every time you cook, guess what you're thinking about? Who can I feed? You know? The holidays come and, and, and you are cooking this big meal while others are thinking about turkey and, and what I'm going to eat and we're going to enjoy family and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. That person is thinking, who can I feed? Mm -hmm. who, who can I feed? I, I, I got to make enough so that I can be a blessing. So there are always that direction in life would be dictated by their purpose. They are always thinking about the purpose and fulfilling that purpose. Your purpose, it is a compass that drives where you go, what you say, and who you associate with. That, that purpose drives you. Whatever it is, if God called you to counsel married couples, no matter what you are doing, you're looking at couples and you're seeing. God will begin to show you things and, you, and, and, and you're looking them and you're, let's say you're at, a, at an engagement, a couple's engagement, and you're watching because you want to be a blessing and you're seeing things that God is showing you. Yeah, see, and I'm saying this from experience because this has happened to me years, many years ago, even before we started ministry, I would go to certain engagements and the Lord would show me that, yeah, they're not, they're not happy. Something is going on. And I'd be like, wow. And I would tell my husband, baby, did you see something going on with them? Something, something is going on, you know? And he said, no, I didn't, I didn't pay attention to that. And, hmm. But why was I able to see it? Why was I able to see it? Purpose. Amen. Amen. Purpose. Another one, your purpose in God will make people pull on you. Some of y'all have experienced that. They will pull on you. And guess what? It won't even get on your nerves. Mm -hmm. You will be given grace and compassion for the people God has called you to serve. Uh-huh. Okay. Ministers, pastors, bishops, mm -hmm. your purpose is to serve. Okay. I told my congregation years ago. It's not about, oh, I am Pastor Trakeela and I'm above you. No. How can I serve you? Mm -hmm. We ought to serve God's people. Okay? So God has given you grace and compassion for the people he has called you to serve. So they're going to pull on you. You know, sometimes when you get up and you minister a word, and it's a right now word, mm -hmm. and then after you minister, you don't pour it out everything in you. Mm -hmm. And you are just weak like a wet noodle after it's all over. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Because yeah. they pulled on you. When you have a congregation that's hungry. When you have people that's before you that's hungry. They will pull on And it's a great thing. And they won't get on your nerves. It won't frustrate you. Mm -hmm. But God. Let me tell you something about being exhausted. Mm -hmm. Exhausted. Because, see, a lot of times when it comes to the things of God, we get exhausted real quickly and say, you know, I can't do all that because I'm tired, you know. But when it comes to other things, we kind of make, you know, um, excuses for it. I got to do it. You know, you know, this is my job. And, and so you work 12, 13, 14, 15 hours a day because this is my job. And But when it comes to serving in the house of the Lord, I'm so exhausted. But let me give you the cure for exhaustion. The cure for exhaustion, exhaustion is intimacy with the mm -hmm. Father. That's, it. That's the cure. 
When I heard that, I heard that from a, a trusted um, minister um, that I listened to. They said the cure for exhaustion is intimacy with the Father. Mm. And see, a lot of times we try to make excuses because we don't want you know, oh, I can't, I can't do this. I can't usher because I'm standing too long. Or, or I can't clean the bathrooms because the scent of the cleaners is just too much. I can't do it. I can't sweep the floor of the church because I don't know if my feet going to give out. Oh, the chairs, fix the chairs in the church. You know, I'm not that strong. Oh my God, ministry, you want me to do ministry? I don't know if I have time. Let me see my job. Uh, you know, I, I got to work and I got to do this. You know, that's too. Oh, you want me to be over the youth? Oh, my God. No, I can't. Those kids, you know, they take a, a level of patience that I just don't have. Oh, Lord, I can't. Can you serve this? Oh, Lord, can I serve? I got to stand up to do that. I got to stand up to serve place. I got to stand up to be a We find every kind of excuse. Get into a place and have intimacy with the Father. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to leave that right there. Let's table that. Okay? Let's table that. Next one. Purpose doesn't have anything to prove. Uh, purpose is confidence and, and fully assured. I don't have anything to prove. I understand my assignment. I understand my purpose and the plan that God has. I'm going to walk this thing out. I don't have nothing to prove to people. If you don't like it, Oh, well, but know that you are walking in the plan of God. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go outside and do your own thing, you know, you, you got to understand that when you open yourself up, mm -hmm. then you open yourself and give the foothold to the enemy. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Another one. Purpose doesn't need to promote. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to promote it. I don't have to sell it to you. I don't have to, you know, tell you over and over, this is what I'm doing to make myself look good. But destiny opened doors. It's my destiny, my purpose. This is what I must do. So it will open the doors for you because of your submission to your God-given purpose, your reputation will precede you. Your reputation will proceed you. Don't be moved. Don't be redirected. Destiny will open doors. Your purpose will open doors. Let's look at Ephesians 4.1. Ephesians 4.1 says, So I, and this is Paul, the prisoner for the Lord, I appeal to you to live a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. That is, to live a life that exhibits godly character, moral courage, personal integrity, and mature behavior. A life that expresses gratitude to God for your salvation. We should live a life as such. Again, I ask. What are you doing? No man knows the hour. No man knows the day when it's time for us to exit this place. Remember, we are foreigners in this land. So the Bible says, so while I yet live, while I yet, are you living? You're in the land of the living. You're still alive. While you yet live, I ask you, what are you doing? And then I have another question. How are you handling your assignment? How are you handling your assignment? See, we can go through life just going to work, coming home and get into a cycle, doing what I have to do to make it, not really developing a relationship with the Father. You know how some of we do those, those penny prayers? Not even a nickel, a penny prayer. You know, it's a yes, I pray just to say I pray, but it's not a hard matter. It's just to say I pray because now it's in my cycle is what I do. I get up in the morning, whenever I get up, I say a little penny prayer. I go and take a bath and go to work and da, 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 come back, cook, do what I got to do, pay bills, work a little bit more, you know, and, 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 and it's a cycle. 
But what about relationship? You can't be a Christian and not have a relationship with God and converse with God. A successful, let me say that, a successful Christian. God wants us to want him. God wants us to be successful in every good work. What are you doing? In God's perfect plan, there is a purpose. And I said before that we are all called and there is assignments that we must do in the season to fulfill our God-given purpose. And if God calls you to an assignment and you don't answer the call, then you won't be effective in your purpose. I want to show you something in Luke 9, 1. Luke 9, 1. It says, Now Jesus called together the 12 disciples and gave them the right to exercise power and authority over all demons and to heal diseases. Okay, first, he called. Mm -hmm. Do you answer the call? Mm -hmm. God has called you, woman of God. God has called you, man of God. Will you answer the call? You want to know what am I doing? What, 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 what are you doing? Will you answer the call? And because the disciples answered the call, he gave. Uh -huh. Well, I, he, he said, you know, he want me to do something, but I don't know. Answer the call. Say yes. And then he will give your next step, your assignment. Whatever God calls you to do, when you answer the call, he gives. And just for you to know that he has already equipped you to do what he calls you to do. You already have the ingredients. The blessing and power is in knowing. It's in knowing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, I can do that? God says, I need you to go. I'm, I need you to feed 500 people. I can do that? And see, that's when trust comes in. Okay, Lord, I trust you. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't even have the funds. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this, God. But you said that you want me to go over here whether it's downtown area and feed 500 people. Now I'm trying to figure it out. That's where we mess up. I'm going to try to think this thing to make sense. And if it don't make sense, then you abort. Mm -hmm. God ain't asked you to try to make sense of his assignments or his instructions for you. Don't make sense. Just be obedient and trust him. You go out there and then you'll be surprised. Oh, you're going to, you finna, girl, let me give you some money. Girl, let me come and help you. That, oh, sis, you need some sodas? I get the sodas. Oh, let me, and then things just start coming together. And then you sit back and say, God, wow. It's because you answered the call. Because you said yes. And then try to figure it out. Try to make sense. Because see, the enemy is banking on you being silent. Remember what the minister said last Sunday? Open your mouth. He's banking on you being silent and not moving. Okay, God said he want me to do something. I ain't going to say nothing because if I say something, you know, people are going to be expecting me to do stuff. So I'm just going to keep it to myself. You know, and that's okay because God got someone else that would answer the call. God got someone else. Those people are going to get fed. God has someone else. God says, open your mouth. Just in the very beginning, how you receive your salvation. Confess with your mouth. You got to open your mouth. And he said, and believe with your heart. Believing will cause you to do. Because you ain't going to do nothing if you don't believe in it. Hmm. So open your mouth. What are you doing? Hmm. Open your mouth. What are you doing? Now I said before about being blessed. You heard me talk about being blessed. Blessed gives you an, an enablement to do that which you could not have done. Now you know the story. Not, well, not the story, but the um, the... The thing that you hear people say about God's super to your human, come superhuman so you can do things that you didn't think that you could do. Well, being blessed is an enablement to do, okay? It's whatever God calls you to do, you have an enablement to do. But I want you to know an enablement should cause you to want to get up and do something. You are blessed. And God says, okay, you are blessed to get jobs. You are blessed to have a house. You are blessed. Whatever it is your heart's desire. 
lines up with the word of God, you are blessed. But if you don't get up and do something, if you don't, God can bless you with the, the, the ability to get a job and help you to even get it, touch the heart of the employer that you, but if you never get up and go to search out for that job, are you still blessed? Yes. But it's your choice to walk it out. It's your choice to walk in the blessings that God has freely given you. It's a choice. Yes, you are blessed. You have an enablement, but what are you doing with it? The Bible says faith without works is dead. Faith is the currency spent in heaven. So if you want to get God's attention, what do you need? Are you walking in faith? You got to be doing something. What are you doing? We have to make a decision, decision that we're going to trust God and move and do. What am I saying? If God says go to the hospital, I have an assignment for you, would you move? If God says, I need you to feed the family of 500, families of 500, would you move? God says, I need you to get up early and to pray for this community for one month, four o'clock in the morning. Would you do it? God says, I want you to take this outfit that you love, love, love. You just bought it on sale and got a good price on it and you love it. And God says, I need you to bless someone with that outfit. outfit. Would you move? Mm. God is looking for obedience for you to move. Because when you move, remember, when he calls you, then he gives. God got a blessing for you. But you got to move. If you hold on to that which you have, that's all you will have. But if you bless, God will give. There is a more in store for you. Now, for those who have been called to do something that seems so large and impossible for you to do. You feel that you don't have the money for You feel that you don't have the time for You feel that you don't have the patience for The knowledge for. And that thing about God is that, the thing about God is that, you know, he don't always call the qualified, but he qualifies the, qual the call. And that to know that you're already equipped. It does not matter what you have or don't have, that you're already equipped. He just needs a yes. He just needs a yes. He just needs a yes. Watch God move on your behalf when you just answer the call. Now look, and Luke 9, 2, it says, Then he sent them out on a brief journey. Remember, he called them and he gave. Luke 9, 1, he called and gave. Verse 2 says, And then he sent them out on a brief journey to preach the kingdom of God and to perform healing. Now is the time for them to do. Okay. He, he called them. They said, yes, he gave. And then he sent out. What did he give them? Knowledge. You're able to heal. You're able to deliver. You're able to cast out. This is what you're able to do. Remember there's, there's power in the knowing. And then once they knew, okay, this what, okay, this what we finna do. Okay. Send. I'm sending you out. Mm -hmm. God says, go preach the kingdom of God and to perform healing. All of this a part of your doing. What are you doing? In verse 3, it says, and he said to them, take nothing for your journey that might encumber you. Neither a walking stick, nor a bag, nor bread, nor money. And do So, God, I'm going on this journey. And the first thing you're going to say, now, nah, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest. Lord, you telling me to take no bread, what I'm going to eat? Because I'm going to get hungry. And you telling me to walk and do it. I'm hungry already, just think about it. Lord, you want me to... Yeah. Instructions. Okay? Sh instructions for the journey. Instructions. So now we're talking about... We're talking about trust. Mm -hmm. We're talking about trust now. Mm -hmm. When you trust God to take care of you. In the midst of fulfilling the purpose that he called you mm -hmm. to do already. Don't you know that God's going to take care of you in a royal way? Mm -hmm. God is going to keep you in a royal way. We got to trust him. 
So he called them, he gave, he sent them out, and then he gave them instructions. Trust. Now, see, you can go your own way. There is an avenue that you can go, but just know when you are on your own, you're prey to the enemy. Yeah, yeah. Well, where is my power? Where is my power? You're prey to the enemy because you're outside of the will of God. God, just, remember what happened with Jonah? Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Whales are still swallowing these days. Okay. That's just a sidebar. Sidebar. In James 4 7, God says, Submit to the authority of God, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. But you got to submit to God first. You got to give God a yes. You got to submit and commit to what God says. The enemy is banking on you, not leaning on God. He's banking on you, not trusting in God. But God says, I need you to walk in your purpose. I called you to walk in this purpose. I will equip you. I will equip you. I will give you the strength where you're weakest because I'm God. And if I called you to do this, I will take care of you. Again, I ask, what are you doing? Last scripture, one of my favorite scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, and it reads, Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, unmovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, always doing your best and doing more than is needed, being continually aware that your labor even to the point of exhaustion, look at that word again, mm -hmm. even to the point of exhaustion. These are for the tired people. I'm going to read this again. Mm -hmm. For the tired people that say, I'm too, I got too much going on. I'm too busy doing things for the Lord. It's just too much right now. Let me read that again. Being continually, continually aware that your labor, even to the point of exhaustion, in the Lord is not futile nor wasted. It is never without purpose. It is never without purpose. Know that God rewards you even in your time of feeling exhausted. And when you push and you do for God, God will keep you and take care of you. God had to give me a personal message on that. You know, there were times I was real concerned about my husband. Because my husband, you know, if you know my husband, you know my husband. He's a ride or die. He, he will rock with you, whatever you call him. He's going to be there. He's going to be a blessing. He's going to go and go. And there was a time in my life where I was like, man, my husband is always busy. He's always doing, always doing. But see, this was my learning world, road that I had to, to cross. We go to the doctor, he get 100%, he's good, his health perfect. I'm the one, they said, oh, high blood pressure, oh, you go, you know, your thyroid acting up and all this going on. And I'm like, every time we go, I always come back with something going on and I got to pray, exile the hill being to take it away from me. And, and then, but my husband always has a squeaky clean report. And the Lord said, you got to understand, he is on my watch. <laughs> I equipped him. Not only that, I strengthened him to do that thing that seems superhuman that, that he's always going and doing. And my husband never complains. Never complains. Never gives up. Like, Man, I don't feel like dealing with today. I'm tired. I said, I don't understand it. He gets up, gets up, get his prayer in and he's going. And I'm like, my God. So there was a lesson that I had to learn even at the point of exhaustion. God will keep you because he has a purpose and a plan. Because, see, he's storing up in heaven. Yes, he, he is storing in heaven. And God's keeping him. He's not skipping a beat, y'all. And again, I say, if y'all know my husband, y'all know my husband. And so that was something that I had to, to walk in. And so I thank God for that. When you're open, God will pour. God will show you. God will give you revelation knowledge so that you can learn. And so I thank God for the learning of that. What you do 
for Christ would never be in vain. Never be in vain. Bless the name of the Lord. I pray that you are blessed by the word today. And I want to thank you once again, everyone that tuned in. And I pray that you shared it with your loved ones and your friends. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Lord God, for your presence. I thank you for allowing me to be your mouthpiece in this hour. And, oh, Lord God, I pray that the word falls on good ground, on the good ground of the hearts of the hearers, God. And so, Father, I pray that you would continue to open this up so that, Lord God, we would not only open our mouths, but we would get moving in the purpose that you have created. And so, Father, I thank you and I give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Bless the